is my friend Peter Peter. How long do we know each other? Well, we are like childhood friends, right? Grew up in the same street, so we know each other like three decades. At 30 least. years. Definitely. Uh, how many languages do you speak? Well, I don't like to brag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, I spent a lot of time in Asia, so you know, made me also more humble. But if you, since you're asking, yeah, I can, I can list like. Okay, uh, do it. So, Indonesian, Bahasa Indonesia. That's like my main language of correspondence right now. Okay. Since yeah, I've been there like for the last 10 years. Uh, Italian. I grew up in Italy. Okay. So Italian is basically my uh, yeah. It's like kind of like my mother tongue. It's even better than my Croatian. My Croatian is not that good actually. It's very good. <laughs> well, I can manage. No, you're very. Right. Communication wise, you know, yeah, I can I can handle Your conversations. Your Croatian is great. I never went to school, so my grammar is a disaster. When it comes to writing in Croatian, uh, that's a disaster. The the ch, ch you know, those accents, all that. I've never mastered that. Nobody knows that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, I now, remember everything. So that's a bit of a consolation then, if you're telling okay. me that even you don't know about it, Many right? Many people think that I, too, didn't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, apart from that, uh, Russian. I used to live in Moscow when I was a kid, like right after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I picked up Russian. You know, when you're a kid, your brain is pretty much a sponge. You can absorb anything in no time. I fully took advantage of that. My brother also, but he was a kid, so he doesn't really remember much. However, both of us, we have this um, acumen for, for languages. You're talented for languages. <laughs> if I lived there, I would probably still speak Croatian and English. <laughs> no, a lot of people look at it as a, as a barrier. For me, it was never a barrier. It was more like, a, I would say, a challenge that I, subconsciously knew that I can overcome you know easily just by putting a little bit of effort and even through gamification like I can tell you like how I'm learned Chinese characters okay this might sound a bit funny and I don't know if I should say this but literally started to recognize Chinese characters was through an app and you know when I would play this app when I'm at the toilet just not <laughs> doing anything you know, so while I'm sitting, I might as well, you know, like uh, brush up my, my Chinese characters through this app. And that's how I mastered over a thousand Chinese characters. Sim basic reading, I cannot say I can read, you know, Chinese books no freaking way, you know. But I can get by and yeah, it's more than enough, I would say, for, you know, for a foreigner. Say Chinese, it's not Indonesian. No, it's different. Indonesia, Bahasa Indonesia is a completely separate language. It has nothing to do with Mandarin or any other Chinese dialect. Okay, so we have Italian, Russian, Indonesian, Chinese, Croatian, but th that's not all. I used to study in Germany, so I my Deutsch is okay, la, you know, I mean, using Singapore English, okay, la, you know, meaning it could be better. Okay. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, but you know, the amazing thing about our brain is that subconsciously everything is in there. We just have to find a way to, you know, arouse that and build connections, like a little bridge. And it doesn't take much, you know, you just have to surround yourself with, with you know, people who speak that language, be in that atmosphere. I'm pretty sure if I were maybe, let's say, just one or two weeks in Germany, I would be yes. practically fluent again. This is what I remember. We were somewhere and then after a few weeks, you told me, oh, I'm starting to speak this language. And I was like seven times in Germany for, I don't know, <laughs> and I, and I was learning it for like 10 years in school. Nothing. Nothing. So my brain doesn't have those upgrades. <laughs> the most beautiful things about life. We're all different. We all have our own, let's say, edges. Okay. okay. Any other? Uh, what else did we uh, not mention? Well, French, you know, I used to go to school in Italy and Italians, they're not big on English. Their main foreign language is French. So guess what? In high school, <laughs> we had to learn French. First of all, you know, it's a Neo-Latin language, just like Italian is. And once you know one, especially if you've studied Latin, and I also studied ancient Greek, it was all part of the curriculum. So to make the story short, French was okay, but I never had a good French accent, okay? Because okay. it's, it's extremely hard to have that French 
you know, um, you have American uh, French. The R, the R, the R, you know, I, I just cannot pronounce that properly. Oh. And with Indonesian, I'm also good to go in Malaysia. So when you think about, you know, the, the amount of people that are utilizing these languages on a daily basis, you got like 260 million in Indonesia, you got another 50 million in, uh, in Malaysia. So that's like over 300 million people that I can easily have correspondence really? because Bahasa Indonesia, it's kind of like Bosnian, Serbia and then Croatian. It's basically all one language. But I don't understand anything about Slovenian. Oh, me neither. Slovenian, <laughs> Slovenian is like a whole different But they league. always, always understand everything we speak. I but actually, that you wanted to say is this. You wanted to say that you don't speak Spanish. Yeah, oh, that's one thing. Oh you know, when, when I was in the U.S., I was on an exchange, right, in California. And don't ask me how. Oh, you were like hostage of Mexico. Yeah, pretty much in Tijuana. You have both kidneys. Uh, yes, I still do. Yeah, <laughs> I managed to pull through that night. Oh, that was a scary night, guys. This, you know? this is this is when you were studying in San Diego. Correct. Yeah. And you, then you, you. Wow, your memory is really sharp. You know? And then you were with your friends, and when you were getting out, somebody stole or something. The issue car. was that my passport, the immigration officers. You know, Americans, they don't know much about geography when they saw this blue, blue passport, you know, which sort of looks like American, but it's not American, you know. And um, yeah, Republika Hrvatska, they had, they thought it was like some kind of a joke or something, you know, they weren't sure that it's even the real country. <laughs> um, so I had a regular student visa. The to make the story short, yeah, I wasn't a, granted access back into the U.S. for quite some time. <laughs> So I had to like, you know, make my way through Mexico. I met a lot of a people months. over there. It took you a few months. Uh, like a month and a half. I, love, I had to get a new visa. I could go all the way to Mexico City, the embassy over there. So was the trip worth it, you know, to sightsee? Absolutely. You know, the, the people <laughs> over there were the most wonderful people, guys, that I ever met, you know, in terms of hospitality. We had a great time. I went to Guadalajara, the Caribbean. The first time I ever experienced the Caribbean was because I was stuck in Mexico. So, you know. <laughs> but do you speak uh, Spanish? It's very similar to Italian. So At the time, don't... yes, I did. Right now, I don't, okay? But I can understand it. I can get by. Uh, just now, when I came back from uh, from Indonesia on the plane, I met two Latino ladies. They didn't speak English at all, so I had to like you know do my best uh, with so with my Spanish. Improvised. I improvised. It was a bit. Uh, I I cannot say I was fluent at all. Okay. But I managed and they understood also some of the words in Italian. I, when I simply couldn't, you know, convey my, my points in, uh, in Spanish, I would switch to Italian and, you know. Slavel, do you speak or know ancient Greek or Latin? Well, I studied it in school. Oh. Obviously, <laughs> you know, Italians, uh, they're very big on culture, right? So any, uh, I wouldn't say high school, but like elementary school education, they kind of force you to either study Latin or ancient Greek or both. So okay. Could you please tell me you. And I studied both. both. Okay. I studied both. <laughs> I went to this European call. It's, it was like some kind of European high school. Okay. Founded by uh, Mussolini himself in Rome. Really? Yes. So it was a fascist school. But it was good in terms of the actual educational curriculum. And yeah, we had uh, ancient Greek which was fun, so I know the ancient Greek alphabet, okay? Oh, uh, yeah, but yeah, but the language is completely different right now. Uh, same thing with Latin, yes. they're called dead languages, you know, but it's good to have that sort of background because it helps you with knowing every language in the world. Pretty much, like okay. even the complicated words, you know, in English that sometimes uh, they want to test your English proficiency, all these standardized tests, admission tests for entering colleges in the US, in the UK. If you have a solid foundation in ancient Greek and Latin, you can master, you can 